Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is November the 17th of 2022. Good morning. I've got my cup of coffee right here. I've got my copy of the Word of God open to Ezekiel chapter 12, the book of Ezekiel chapter 12. Our chapters are starting to get a little bit longer again, and I'm grateful for that. Just allows us to spend a little bit more time together. And again, I hope your day is getting off on a good foot. Um, it is a good day. Hey, let's go ahead. Let's get started with a bad dad joke. Uh, I was checking the news. I was checking um, comments that friends have made and so forth. And so I got a little bit of help this morning. And so let me just share with you what I learned. Uh, not everyone thinks Cleopatra was pretty. But that's how Julius sees her. Okay, I liked it. Um, anyway, good morning to you. We move on from there. And again, I woke up this morning. There's a fresh layer of snow on the ground. Um, I don't know what the temperatures are supposed to do today, but we will take it as it comes. Again, as I mentioned before, we're in Ezekiel chapter 12, and we ask that you please join us there and follow along with us as we read. And that way we get the most out of our time in the Word of God each day. And um, again, uh, I've got a good, pretty good agenda going on today. I hope to be quite productive. I hope you do as well. But again, what is going to be most important is God's will to be done. It is almost nine o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and we'll bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father, and ask His blessing upon today. Ask His blessing upon His Word. Ask His blessing upon His people. Let's pray together. Glorious Father, good morning to you. We thank you and we praise you for a brand new day. We thank you for the way the day has started. And Lord, only you know what will transpire today. Father, as we come into your presence, again, thanking you for the privilege of opening up your word. When we stop and we think about the fact that the God of the universe has revealed himself to us in the scriptures, and we have the privilege each and every day to open it up, to read it together, to be encouraged, to be challenged. Father, thank you for this privilege. And Father, for the opportunity that we have to learn more about the God that we serve in order that we might be able to serve you more faithfully. Father, we want to say thank you for each one that is joining us. You know their circumstance. And so, Father, we lift them into your presence and ask that you would undertake for them. Father, our desire is that your richest blessings be upon each one. But, Father, as we mentioned last night, that we are not wise enough, smart enough, to know what is best. And so we leave that into your hands, because you know. We ask that you would do that which is best for each and every one of them. Father, as we stand before you, we ask your blessing upon today. We pray that as your people we would be faithful. We would strive for righteousness. We would strive for obedience and submission to you. And Father, as we do, bless us. Bless this day. And Father, glorify yourself. Glorify your Son in our lives. Use us in any way you see fit. We ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 12. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not, 
They have ears to hear, and they hear not, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from my, thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though, they be a rebellious house. Then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight, as stuff for removing. And thou shalt go forth at even in their sight, as they that go forth into captivity. Dig thou through the wall in their sight, and carry out thereby in their sight. Shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, that thou see not the ground. For I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. And I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity. And in the even I digged through the wall with mine hand. I brought it forth in the twilight and bare it upon my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, Hath not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest thou? Say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, This burden concerneth the prince in Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them. Say, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight, and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. He shall cover his face, that he see not the ground with his eyes. My net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans. Yet shall he not see it, though he die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him, and all his bands, and I will draw out the sword after him. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, and from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen, whither they come. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling, and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and of the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with carefulness, and drink their water with astonishment, that their land may be desolate from all that is therein, because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them, therefore, Thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, 
Behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You know, I was struck by how accurate the word of God has been, always has been, always will be. It talks about the prince of the land shall be taken to Babylon, and he will not see it, though he die there. It's an interesting way of looking at things, considering that the king, when he was captured by the Babylonians, he was forced to watch them kill his children. And then they plucked out his eyes and took him to Babylon. And he shall not see it, though he die there. God knows what he's talking about. He's always faithful. Last night in prayer meeting, we were talking about the fact that he was called faithful and true. Everything he has spoken will come to pass. Beloved, I trust that today you're going to find yourself striving to be faithful in all things. Striving to do his will, not our will. Striving to be obedient. Striving to be su submissive to him in all things. Beloved, be faithful. And never... Never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got a job to do. Let's go out there and do it. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.